ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, millions of mourners track the Queen's coffin online as it's flown to London. But first, NASA will smash a spacecraft into an asteroid to check Earth's defences against getting hit by a giant space rock. The Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, is now less than a fortnight away and we'll see the craft, which was launched a year ago, hit the small asteroid head-on as a practice run to protect against some of the 30,000 similar flying rocks which are zooming around the solar system. But don't panic! Most of them would just burn up in the Earth's atmosphere if they were on a trajectory with our planet. However, NASA's test planned on the 26th of September wants to see if there was a risk to us, whether the asteroid, which is called Dimorphos, could be nudged off course to stop it causing potential damage to life and property. Now, nearly six million people logged on to try and track the flight carrying the Queen's coffin from Edinburgh to RAF Northolt in London. That's according to the service Flight Radar 24. In fact, so many people tried to access the flight data that the site says the volume of traffic caused technical problems on the platform and took the site down for a while. The company tweeted that 600,000 users were able to follow the flight, while some 6 million attempts were logged. Flight KRF-01R was the most tracked flight in the world on Flight Radar 24, as the Boeing C-17A Globemaster III flew south over the UK having left Edinburgh at about 5.45pm to arrive in northwest London at around 7pm. Next, scientists have been able to map the speed which a giant glacier is melting and forecast what the impact on rising sea levels might be. Now it's being suggested that losing the 75 mile wide Thwaites Glacier in West Antarctica could raise sea levels from 3 to 10 feet. And if you add in the adjacent glaciers, there's another big glacier next to it called Pine Island Glacier and some other smaller ones. If you add all those together, this one corner of Antarctica contributes 10% of the current rate of sea level rise. And that's been escalating rapidly over the last couple of decades. That's Dr Robert Larter, a marine geophysicist with British Antarctic Survey, who's been speaking to us aboard the RSS Sir David Attenborough. So how was it done? Modern systems can send very directional beams of sound. So as you, as you go along with, with the ship, you can collect data over a whole swath of, of seafloor. We had a system like this on an autonomous vehicle that was deployed from the ship and could go down near the seafloor and then we can get much more detailed maps of the seafloor. Analysis of new ridges in the ice reveal at some point in the past 200 years the glacier lost contact with the seabed and is melting at the rate of 1.3 miles each year. But can the melt be stopped or at least slowed? The biggest step is is to really reduce emissions as quickly as possible and really uh, hold on to the net zero targets because that is the way to stop warming are there and developing and we just have to implement them as quickly as possible. Now, Tekken fans, you're in for a treat because Sony has teased its eighth instalment of the beat-em-up franchise at its State of Play event. There was also a trailer for Star Wars. First order on Batuu. Surely we can count on you now. Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Hello, Edition. A virtual reality adventure released two years ago on the Oculus Quest, which is being remastered for the PSVR 2 next year. Sony's going big on the PSVR 2, which are 4K goggles and a controller accessory for its PlayStation 5 console. The event also gave us a look at what's being described as digital collectibles available through its PlayStation Stars loyalty program, which are a bit like non-fungible tokens in the form of virtual statuettes of its gaming characters. Now, British defence chiefs say Vladimir Putin's military is sourcing weapons from heavily sanctioned states like Iran and North Korea as the Kremlin's arsenal dwindles due to Western trade restrictions. It comes after reports of an Iranian drone being shot down by Ukrainian forces. Britain's MOD says this particular model of downed UAV has a 1500 mile range and was used previously to attack an oil tanker in the Middle East. Coming up... 
the science behind baby sleep, and how much fuel will the new Ferrari V12 SUV drink? Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. Scientists believe they've identified the best way to calm down a crying baby, apparently in just 13 minutes. The knack, they say, involves walking around for five minutes while carrying the infant, while making sure to minimise abrupt movements, followed by around eight minutes of sitting while holding the baby before finally laying them down in the cot for sleep. Researchers at Riken Centre for Brain Science in Japan reckon their findings, published in the journal Current Biology, offer an immediate solution for infant crying, or so they say. A study is suggesting that swapping to renewables from fossil fuels could save the world over £10 trillion over the next three decades. Researchers from Oxford University say switching to eco-friendly alternatives is getting far cheaper, while the price of fossil fuels hasn't changed much in real terms for over a century. But advancing battery and energy capture tech in the likes of solar and wind are actually seeing price drops of nearly 10% every year. And finally... Ferrari has released its first family SUV and it's going to cost around £350,000. Puro Sangue, which means thoroughbred, is a four-seater, four-door computer on wheels but with a throaty V12 engine under the bonnet. Running costs? Well, it's 100 litre tank at today's prices. Cost you about £167 to fill up. And what sort of MPG would you get? Well, it's not a Prius and that thirsty 12-cylinder engine get you about 17 miles per gallon all told so definitely not one for the eco-conscious you're up to date come back at 4 p.m for the leader from the evening standard here in london and we'll be back on thursday at 1 p.m see you then